लेक्चर लेक्चर ट्वेंटी फाइव ओके एंड वट वी गोन सी बिगिनिंग विद दिस क्लास दिस दूसरी कॉल्ड इक्वलाइजेशन Well, maximum likelihood sequence detection is also a form of equalization. So, equalization is a general term that deals with uh, receiver signal processing that tackles ISI. Okay, so that's the way to define uh, equalization: receiver signal processing. Tackle ISI. Okay, so that's the very loose broad way of putting it there's also possibilities of doing something at the transmitter to equalize okay so it's so this receiver is something i want to talk about loosely <coughs> okay so so far the only way we saw for tackling isi was to build a front end which is optimal using the white and match filter right you do a match filter followed by simple rate sampler followed by the whitening filter then you have an optimal front end which converts into a converts your signal into a signal space sample set of signal space samples signal no symbol time samples okay and then you run those zks through a viterbi algorithm and that's the optimal way of doing things you can't do any better than that right so that's the so optimal way of doing things and the problem we saw with the viterbi was basically just it's not implementable in if if your number of taps becomes very large okay so for in some cases your channel that m of z might actually be iir infinite impulse response in that case there is no question of implementing the viterbi okay so there are several cases where you want alternatives and those alternatives is what we'll briefly see uh, here okay so i'll i'll be closely following for most of this part i'll be following chapter 8 from barry lee and mr smith okay all right so let me once again remind you for as to where we are okay so you have a set of symbols coming into a transmit filter g of t and then you have the c of t okay so let me see how well people remember what c of t is what is c of t channel response but actually it is the baseband equivalent complex baseband equivalent to channel response so c of t in fact can be complex okay so keep keep that in mind Okay, so then you add n of t. Once again, n of t is the complex baseband equivalent of the passband noise. So n of t can also be complex. Okay, so when I talk of complex processes, the autocorrelation and power spectral density are defined slightly differently. Right? What is the autocorrelation for n of t? Expected value of n of t times n of t plus tau conjugate. Right? So you always do a conjugate. And there's confusion about where you put the conjugate and all these things. Okay, so I, I I didn't go into detail there, but remember that there are some intricacies in the actual definition of complex random process. So there you have a received signal, and we define and we derive the optimal front end in two different ways, right? So I first defined a metric, which was the minimum distance metric in the continuous signal domain itself. Okay, and then we derived the optimal front end. It's also possible to derive it using the orthogonal projection, which is optimal, which is the optimal thing to do. Okay, so you do that. You get this front end, which is h star of minus t, and what's h of t? G of t convolved with c of t. Okay, and then you sample at signal rate, symbol rate, to get a sequence y k. Okay, and we saw this y k has ISI from both the causal and the anti-causal part, and in fact, you can write y k as what? S k. Convolved with what? Y k can be written as S k convolved with what? Rho h k. Okay, so where rho h is the autocorrelation of uh, h. Okay, plus n prime k. Okay, so this is an autocorrelation function, as in it's symmetric about k equals zero. So we'll have both causal and anti-causal ISI. So in Y k will have contributions from S k, S k plus or minus one, S k plus or minus two, so on. Okay, so that's the way the contributions go. And what what more do we know about n prime k? N prime k is is a complex Gaussian random process, but it's not white. Okay, what will be its power spectral density? Yeah, it will be S h of 
you see okay there'll also be uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So did I actually write down what the possible density there will be? Okay, so S H of E part J two pi of T. Okay, so so we know that an autocorrelation function, autocorrelation rho H of K, can be factors uh, factored as gamma square M K convolved with M star of minus K. Now this M K is monic causal minimum phase and all that. So once you do that, you go ahead and do the filtering with 1 by gamma squared m star 1 by z star to get zk which only has causal ISI terms and those ISI, that ISI can be written as simply filtering of sk with mk alone. Okay, So those are all things we saw. Okay, so this is this this entire thing, this front end, so to speak. Okay, the reason why it's called a front end is it processes the received signal first. Okay, at the very at the very front, then converts and produces symbol rate samples. Okay, or samples in general. Okay, so those kind of things are called front end. This is the white end match filter. Okay, WMF. For short, okay, and this we saw as the optimal front end because it does orthogonal projection onto the signal space. Okay, so it has to work. All right. So, so a couple of words about the spectral factorization and what gamma square is because that's important. I kind of quickly went through it, so hopefully, hopefully it's clear. Okay, so if you view it in z domain, S H of z is gamma square m z m star of one by z star okay so it's very typical to talk of rational transfer functions in z domain okay so whenever you think of z transforms you think of always rational transfer functions okay so but in reality your actual spectrum see whenever but the fourier spectrum is only on the unit circle right so only only for uh, only in terms of f and fourier transform itself you don't think of it as a rational form or anything like that right you don't have to have the fourier transform in rational form you can think of it as a general function okay so it's good also to so this is usually useful when the when sh of z is rational when it's not rational it's also good to have the fourier transform form which is what it's gamma squared m e power a j 2 pi f t m star e power j 2 pi f t the reason i'm writing it as f t as opposed to just using a theta or a phi which is a normalized frequency variable is to emphasize that what am I emphasizing that the symbol rate right so capital T is crucial here okay the symbol rate enters the picture so that's why I'm writing it this way okay so uh, sometimes I'll also write it as e pa j theta the theta is the normalized frequency variable that you usually use for the DTFT right so you don't use this uh, other thing okay so 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 here once again this is all monic causal minimum phase and all that what's gamma squared so we have a formula for gamma square okay hope i gave you this formula before exponential 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi sh e pa j theta d theta okay oh there's a log okay forgot the log forgot the log forgot the log okay so log S H E pa J theta D theta. Okay. So clearly, once once I give a formula like this, clearly for the spectral factorization to exist, what should happen? This integral should exist, right? If this integral doesn't exist, then there's no question of the spectral factorization. Okay, so that's that's a condition, it's called the Pali Weiner condition, okay, for the existence of the spectral factorization. So most uh, most spectra will satisfy this constraint. Okay. So the time when this will not this, this integral will not exist is when sh of e pa j theta goes to 0 over a non-zero interval. If it goes to 0 only at one point or a finite number of points, you can show still that this will exist. Okay. But if it goes to 0 on an interval, which is, which is of non-zero length, then clearly this integral will go for a toss. Okay. So what does it mean in practice? Don't use such frequencies. Okay. So if you know your fold spectrum is going to go to 0 over a band, and don't use that band for transmission. Okay, so then something, very bad things can happen. 
right? Obviously, you don't want to do such things. Okay, so this is something uh, something that's done. All right. So this quantity, right? This quantity, you can also see that will be positive, right? So finally, you're doing even though you're doing log and integrating, finally you're doing an exponential. So everything is going to become positive. So gamma square is okay. And this quantity is actually called the geometric mean of SH. Okay. So I'll denote it like this. Okay. The reason I want to denote it like this is I want to distinguish it from the arithmetic mean. How will I define the arithmetic mean for SH or any other function? Simply 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi SH e power j theta d theta. Okay. So you can use now uh, the standard uh, inequalities. What is the standard inequality that I might want to use here? Jensen's Jensen's inequality can be used here to show that arithmetic mean will be at least as large as the geometric mean. And when will there be equality? When you have a flat function. Okay, so that that's that's the quantity. That's a result we'll use. Okay, so a result we can use to quickly see some properties is the arithmetic mean is at least as large as the geometric mean and equality if and only if sh is flat okay right so i can define these geometric means and arithmetic means for any other function also right for any other spectrum which defined from minus pi to pi i can define a very similar geometric mean and arithmetic mean and this is the result we'll use later all right, so this is something maybe I didn't mention before, so I want to just emphasize that very quick. All right, so so at the end of the day, we saw that instead of battling with a very complicated uh, channel model, we can simply see that the only model of interest to us is SK going through a monic causal loosely minimum phase M of Z and white Gaussian noise being added to produce zk okay so this model was fairly important so zk became sk convolved with mk plus nk and here not only is does mk have all these nice properties in addition nk was what it's white and gaussian okay remember it's complex gaussian well zero mean and the variance of the real and imaginary part is what Yeah, variance of real well, or imaginary part, both the parts of n of k is what? Okay, so you can show this will be n naught by 2 gamma square. Okay, the real part, imaginary part. Okay, so what will be the level of the PSD of nk? Okay, so it will not be n0 by 2 gamma square, it will be n0 by gamma square because of the complex part. Okay, if it were if n of k were to be a real random process, it would have been just n0 by 2 gamma square. So it's complex, since n of k has got both real and imaginary part, you'll see it has to be n0 by gamma square, right? So if you do just expected value of n square of k or and n of k times n star of k, you'll have both the real and imaginary parts. Two of these guys will add. Okay, so that's one thing you have to be watch out, you have to watch out for when people talk about power spectral density of complex process. Okay, so it's a little bit different from real. All right. So this is the model that we are going to work. So remember, what are the assumptions? What are the various assumptions to for this model to hold? Okay. So first of all, you have to know H of t, right? So you have to know receiver has to know H of t. Okay. And then you have to be you have to be able to spectrally factorize the folded spectrum caused by H of t. Okay, so what is this H of t? G of t convolved with C of t. So maybe G of t you already know. Okay, so it's a transmit filter. So then C of t definitely you have to know. Okay, and then you have to hope that SH of e power j theta is spectrally factorizable, and all these filters are nice and implementable. It's not very terribly bad. Okay, so this is a serious, serious limitation. But in spite of that, this is a useful model at least from theory to know what what is possible. Okay, so the next thing the uh, one, one, one more thing we'll need to compare all these different equalization methods is to quickly be able to compare them in terms of probability of error. 
Okay, so we saw the MLST the evaluating the probability of error was a bit of a pain, but we still we were able to evaluate it using what? What is the key idea that was used to simplify all those calculations? You go to pairwise symbol error probabilities as opposed to individual probabilities, right? You go through pairwise, the pairwise idea, invariably everything will simplify to one Q function. Okay, so roughly whenever you do any processing like this, signal processing like this, finally when you make dec make decisions on your symbols, you can always evaluate probability of error roughly using the pairwise idea and you will get one Q function multiplied by a constant outside. Okay, so many of these equalization methods if you want to do very accurate analysis it's impossible pretty much it's very tough so we won't do that we only do pairwise and we will quickly expect one q function to be the probability of error okay so we'll compare these methods based on pairwise error probability or what's inside the q function in the pairwise error probability and that is called usually figure of merit okay loosely like snr but it, there might be other components other than snr there so Usually it's called figure of merit. Okay, so what's the idea here? So finally, probability of say symbol error in this case or in general some other error as well, we know roughly will work out to some constant times Q of an argument. Okay, so I want to say that argument is related to the figure of merit. Okay, so that argument I'll it's it's once again standard to call it root gamma by two. Okay, so you can call it anything else, it doesn't really matter, it's root gamma by 2 and all, it's just a convenience being used. So usually it will work out to what? D by 2 sigma, right? So you want that D by sigma, D squared by sigma square type to be as gamma, okay? So that's why they do this artificial definition. So this gamma is called the figure of merit, okay? So for any system, what would you like the figure of merit to be? Should it be small, big? big right so it has to be as big as possible the bigger the better okay well, if you have a larger figure of merit then your system is doing better than some other system which has a smaller figure of merit but remember there is approximation here there's a constant outside all these things matter okay so in the non-isi case when you for instance have a two-dimensional spectrum or so what does the figure of merit work out to what will it work out to usually if you have a 2d constellation x right Right? No ISI. What will the figure of merit work out to? Yeah, so D min squared by sigma squared. Right? So that's how it will work out to. Okay? So what is the D min? D min is the D min of X. Okay? Right? When you don't have any ISI, the figure of merit is going to work out to that. Okay? Well, your symbol SK is coming from an X. Okay? What is the minimum distance, minimum Euclidean distance in that X alphabet? Square that, divide by sigma square. Sigma square is the variance of the real or imaginary part. Okay? So that's what this will work out. Okay? So in the non-ISI case, it's very, very clear. In the ISI case, what's going to happen is what we are going to look at. Okay? So at best, we can expect the ISI case to be as good as the non-ISA case and we can be happy about it. If it's if it happens to be as good as the non-ISA case, then we can be we can be happy about it. But maybe it will be lesser, maybe it will be slightly weaker. We don't know. Okay, so we'll have to look at that carefully. Okay, so this this is a comparison we'll do. We'll, it'll be in terms of figure of merit. Okay. So 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 for the ISI case. one can quickly find bounds on figure of merit okay it's possible to find bounds on the figure of merit for the isi case okay the non isi case the expression itself came out very easily but for the isi case bounds are easy the exact evaluation might be more difficult okay so the first bound i'm going to talk about is what's called the match filter bound Basically, what you assume here is, you assume that only one symbol is transmitted. Okay. So, I just now said ISI case, but I said, I am quickly saying, 
there is really no isi okay so if there's only one symbol that's transmitted there cannot be any isi right do you believe me or not obviously cannot be any isi it's only one symbol okay so so but that's a bound right definitely it's a bound for the isi case the reason you do this is you want to account for the channel right when the non isi i'm, I'm not even thinking of any h of t so the energy of the channel kind of gets skipped right you forget about that expression but that is important to take care of so maybe you so you have to bring in the channel a little bit so for that i'm going to do a uh, match filter bound where you have only one symbol transmitted but the channel will still be there okay so if that is the case then what is your zk zk is simply just s0 mk plus nk for all k right this is for k equals 0 1 2 so on is it okay your symbol s of k is simply s of 0 delta okay so you're convolving with mk this is just a multiplication it becomes this okay so now this s0 belongs to x right this is my symbol remember this is my received symbol received symbol i want to measure the minimum distance between any two received symbols okay so remember i'm doing only pairwise probability okay so all my symbols now are in some very large dimensional space but i have two symbols between which i want to find distance okay right remember this is clear what are the received symbols now it's not just s0 it's actually s0 times m0 s0 times m1 like that okay so remember that's the received symbols received symbols are what okay some a times m0 a times m1 a times m2 so on for a in x okay these are my received symbols so if i were to plot the received constellation i'll need a really really large dimension if mu is finite of course yeah it's finite dimensional you would get a finite dimension but still the dimension is fairly large okay so now i have to find the distance between any two received symbols okay two received symbols correspond to two distinct transmitted symbols i have to find the distance between two received symbols okay so once i find the minimum distance between any two received symbol i can use pairwise error probability very easily right my figure of merit calculation will come automatically without any problem okay so that's the first step so how do you find that so d min squared is minimum over a a prime n x summation k equals 0 to infinity of what modulus a m k minus a prime m k squared right now m k is going to nicely factor out and you'll be only left with mod a minus a prime squared okay what is minimum over a prime belonging to x summation mod a minus a prime squared okay there's no summation i'm sorry a prime a minus a prime comes out summation mk still remains right so let me write that down carefully i think i did that a little bit fast so maybe it's not clear so you'll have mod a minus a prime squared multiplied by summation k equals 0 to infinity mod mk squared right so that will come out of the summation because it doesn't depend on a okay so that comes out so this what is this this is d min square x okay so this we can show therefore we see that in the non isi case d min square becomes d min square x multiplied by this quantity which is summation k equals 0 to infinity mod mk square okay all right so this i can quickly evaluate okay this i can quickly evaluate but this one seems like it's a little bit complicated i might have to do a spectral factorization to evaluate that so maybe i want to avoid spectral factorization how can i quickly avoid spectral factorization and come up with an expression for this quantity in terms of gamma and just sh of z can i do that is it possible how will i do that yeah exactly right so so you see you can compute you can compute quickly this 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 can be quickly computed by integrating sh of z so basically it's it's energy in h but there'll be also a gamma square entering the picture okay so that you can this you can show will be equal to energy in h divided by gamma square okay so because mod h square is the same as mod m square so you do parsevals 
you integrate over m squared you will get the same as integrating over h squared so that becomes energy in the received pulse eh okay is that fine okay so why does the gamma square come come down in the denominator oh, that's how we define the speckle factorization gamma square is some positive constant which i pulled out okay so eh by gamma square okay so this so now this will give us an easy way of computing the figure of merit for the match filter bound or the non isa case which is what demon squared by sigma square for demon square i'll use this formula so it's 1 by sigma square times demon square x times eh by gamma square now, but what is sigma square now this is the variance of the real or imaginary part in the final nk i got what is that it's n not by 2 gamma square so you see the gamma square also cancels and the match filter bound nicely evaluates to demons square x 2 eh by n not okay so this is nice to see okay so remember eh is the energy in the received pulse h of t then yeah so whatever those constants you need to make sure that the summation works out so this eh has to be suitably defined okay so if you want to evaluate it from uh, mod h squared then there has to be some if it's a dtft of that then there has to be a 1 by 2 pi h so it's also possible to find it from various other formula okay so be careful so basically this is the quantity and i'm going to say this is the same as mod uh, h squared okay all right so so this is a nice figure of merit to have so what does it mean the figure of merit for the isi case can never be larger than gamma mf okay so this will be the largest possible figure of merit that you can possibly expect for the isi case okay and see what all the factors that are involved here you have demon square of x of course you expect that and then you have the energy in the transmit in the received pulse h then you have n not by 2 dividing okay so this is nice as in it can be easily evaluated there is nothing that stops you from evaluating it can be very very easily done okay so you see from here the probability of error for the isi case okay simple error or any other error with isi is going to be greater than or equal to some constant times q what root gamma mf by 2 okay all right so this is the probability of error with pretty much no isi okay so this is the first bound and we'll usually compare or in one or two cases we'll definitely compare with this match filter bound to see whether it's working or not but this is a useful bound in practice because any other equalization scheme that you come up with you can always compare with this and see how close you are to this to decide whether or not you're doing very well okay so this is a useful bound to have from that point of view the other bound that we'll do is the mlsd bound okay so this is more difficult to evaluate and i won't uh, make a big show of evaluating it because it's we know it's tough okay but we know how to do this right so we know this is the best receiver for the isi case this is not the non isi case the isi case itself okay and this figure of merit also we did before right this is going to be equal to demon squared by sigma squared but what is demon now what is demon squared now you remember how did we how do you define the minimum distance between two points in the received constellation for mlsd what did i use i used uh, there was a term that i introduced in terms of paths on the trellis okay yeah the error event right so basically you can write this as minimum over error events e and then i defined a metric for the error event e okay so this is the quantity and i said one can evaluate it for a trellis but it's not very easy it's possible to evaluate that you do that okay so in general this will be greater than or equal to demon squared of x okay so we saw that also This will be greater than or equal to one can show this result in a very nice way. Okay, so it has to be greater than or equal to even square of x, and that will work out in your favor. Okay. 
so so it's difficult to make a very much more precise statement about uh, the mlst figure of merit than this okay this is the best bound that you can think of so if you use this bound you can see gamma mlst will definitely on the one side be less than the figure of merit for the match filter case or it will be greater than okay d min square of x divided by n not by 2 gamma square okay remember the sigma square here is n not by 2 gamma square okay so this is the this is the best you can say for the mlst okay so it's difficult to do more than this in, in, unless you know the actual m of z and its finite tap and you can run some algorithms to find what the minimum minimum distance error event is okay so if it's a small enough trellis then you can do it otherwise it's tough to do this okay so so this is roughly figures of figures of merit and for approximate methods that we see we'll also calculate figure of merit okay and hopefully you're convinced that figure of merit is a much much easier calculation than accurate probability of error okay so you just find closest received signal constellation points and then do q of that that by 2 sigma it's much much easier than anything else okay all right so so that's all the background we need we can directly jump into one of the simplest constructions out there for equalization which is called the zero forcing linear equalizer okay so here's the construction it's actually very easy fairly simple to describe okay and even to analyze it's fairly easy so here this is the channel that we have noise gets added have ck okay so <coughs> the zero forcing linear equalizer basically puts a filter in zk okay after zk puts a linear filter okay so that what you get at the output xk has zero isa no isa as in xk depends only on sk okay it depends only on sk it does not depend on any other signal component okay so what should that filter be 1 by mos okay so at this point this is pretty much the unique uh, filter but if you try uh, if you try something else there can be more possibilities okay so because before before this for this model what's actually happening to r of t you are doing h star of minus t and then you are sampling at symbol rate and then you are doing 1 by gamma square m star of 1 by z star okay so if you change many of those you can equivalently achieve this overall effect okay but this is also a good way of doing it this is a this is the filter which will achieve achieve zero forcing linear equalization so once you do the equalization what can i do now here i can do symbol by symbol detection yeah 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 i'm not going to talk about that okay so whenever people say linear equalization zero zero forcing linear equalization they mean that you're going to filter by 1 by m of z and then you're going to do symbol by symbol detection okay that's already implied when you say linear equalization okay so you do symbol by symbol detection to get s cap k okay so what is xk now how can i write sk xk it's going to be sk plus some noise but what will be the the statistics for that noise will it be gaussian yeah it will be gaussian it's a gaussian random variable random process filtered by a linear time invariant filter it will once again be gaussian there's no problem there but it will not be white okay so what will be the psd or what will be the psd is something you can determine right what will be the psd what will be the psd okay so it will be roughly of the form 1 by sh of e power j theta right Do you agree or not? Okay, the PSD will be one by S H e power j theta, right? Of course, there's some gamma square type thing that I'm that I'm ignoring. Ah, uh, there'll be n not by two. Okay, so there'll be n not on top, which I have to take care of. Okay, so there'll be an n not 
So in this case, I can say this is equal. This will be the PhD. Okay. So, so right now it seems like it's not really a bad thing, right? Maybe you think it's it's okay. What is what's wrong if there's a weird PhD and not by SH of epa j theta? Okay. So an interesting question is what is the variance of the real or imaginary part of n prime of k? How do you answer the question? What's the variance? Suppose I say sigma v squared is the variance of real part of n prime k. What is the variance? Well, it will also be equal to the variance of the imaginary part, right? It's all all that property will be preserved by linear filtering. That will not be lost, okay? But how do you calculate sigma v squared? Yeah, so you'll have to do integrate out this area and then divide by two. Okay, so that's uh, that's how it works. So let me do that. It will become n naught by two integral minus pi to pi one by s h. Okay, there should be a should be a one by two pi somewhere, right? Should be a one by two pi. Okay, there has to be a one by two pi. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay, e pi j theta d theta. Okay, right? So what what do you think will happen to sigma v square? So if before this, what what was sigma v square? N naught by two gamma square. So now it has become n naught by two into the arithmetic mean of what? One by s h of e pa j t. Okay, so that's how I'm going to write it down. The final expression I'm writing is n naught by two times arithmetic mean of one by s h. Okay, so that's my final expression for sigma v square. Okay, so so what can you expect in general sigma v square to be? It's going to be larger than n naught by two definitely. Okay, so that's why it said linear equalization causes what's called noise enhancement. Okay, so people typically call this noise enhancement. Definitely, compared to n naught by two, the variance is going to be larger. Okay, so it's going to be reasonably large. When will it be much much larger? When can you expect it to be very very large? Yeah, if there is a spectral null somewhere in your channel, then it's going to go off to a very large number. In fact, in that case, even the linear equalizer is very questionable. Okay, so your uh, your variance is going to go off to a huge number. You can't handle. Or if there is a dip in the channel, then the linear equalizer goes out of the picture as well. And when when why will there be dips in the channel? Well, that's what you want to do, right? You want to use bandwidth where the channel is going to low amplitudes. Okay, so you are expecting some very low amplitude part for the channel as well. Okay, so that's why you are doing equalization and all that. The channel is reasonably flat. You don't have to do much equalization. Okay, since you are expecting it to go down, then you may not be able to do linear equalization. Okay, so linear equalizer seems to be a limit in terms of seems to put a limit on the bandwidth that you can use. Okay, if the channel is reasonably flat and it's not going down to zero, then you can do linear equalization. But you can't really go to parts of the channel where it's going really really. Okay, so if you want to do figure of merit, once you know the variance, it's very easy to do figure of merit. Okay, so figure of merit for the zero forcing linear equalizer. It's going to be simply d min square of x divided by sigma v square. Okay, right? I'm doing just symbol by symbol detection. What is my what is my received value? X k. It is basically the symbol plus some Gaussian noise at a certain variance. Okay, of course there's some dependence from symbol to symbol, but I'm completely ignoring that dependence on the noise. Right? That's why I'm doing linear equalizer. Okay. So this is my figure of merit. So if you want, you can substitute everything you know. And you get the answer as d min square x two times two times two divided by n naught s h. Okay, is there a question? What's the question? I am not going to do that. In the zero forcing linear equalizer, you don't do it. You just do symbol by symbol detection. Yeah, if you want to do something else that's more fancy, then you go back to MLSD. Right? You'll have to pretty much do MLSD at that point if you want to do anything optimal. 
maybe there are some suboptimal things we'll see more versions as we go along but in the zero forcing linear equalizer the symbol by symbol detection is kind of implicit okay that's why you're doing this otherwise why would you want to force the isi to zero if you can if you can deal with uh, detection dependence between symbols you will not force it to zero in the first place okay so you have a receiver which cannot deal with isi at all only thing it can do is linear filtering so what do you do you have to do this okay, so that's the thing okay well there's a better option we will go to that soon enough but for now this is the first thing you can do okay of course if there's a spectral null you're badly hit this linear equalizer will not even exist okay so a version which is much much better for implementing is what's called the zero forcing decision feedback equalizer okay so most people pretty much don't uh implement the linear equalizer in practice ex except in special cases where your channel is very well behaved or you know your uh where there are some other peculiar properties we'll we'll maybe talk about it later but but usually you always use decision feedback equalizer okay so it's, it's a very much more common thing to use and the reason you'll see the figure of merit there'll be a big uh, there'll be a nice change because of something okay so let's see what's the idea in the decision feedback equalizing okay so let's let me draw a different picture for the linear equalizer what's happening in the linear equalizer is is the following okay so what's happening here to zk i'm filtering by 1 by m of z but i'm going to write it in a feedback loop okay because i know m of z is monic i can of course write like this what should i put here is m of z enough what should i put here to get back my same xk as before what should i put here <laughs> this is very basic system theory write it down write it down what should it be x of z equals z of z plus some filter times x of z itself okay so already you know x of z is 1 by m of z times z of z so what should it be i already gave you a hint i already put m of z there you might also want to use the fact that m of z is monic plus 1 you're getting very close but it's not plus 1 okay should i put a minus here should i put a minus here maybe i put a minus here maybe the minus is good needed m of z minus 1 Okay, so this is what I want. I want M of Z minus one. So you tell me, should I put a minus here, or should there be a minus here or not? It's fine. Should be minus. Okay, I think there should be a minus. Okay, so this is the same filter as before. See, this is this is nothing but one by M of Z, It's just written in a different way. So if one by M of Z is unstable, even though I'm writing it as M of Z minus one, this overall filter will also be unstable. Okay, so it's all feedback. but you're feeding back all kinds of stuff so it will be unstable only so don't worry about stability there okay so what do you do next after xk you put a detector okay right symbol by symbol detector to produce a scap okay right this is what i did before okay so a smart idea which is really smart it came from somebody and uh, is to move that detector before the 
feedback actually happens okay right so you see the way it works if you move the it's, it's a very smart idea the way it, way it came about it's a slick idea also so if you move the detector inside this loop okay you're not doing anything drastically different right say xk you expect it to be close to sk right whether you feedback xk or the detected version of xk which is the more accurate version you want is is quite okay normally it doesn't make much of a difference right so that's an idea that somebody introduced a person called austin it's quite quite long back so once you introduce that you see things become much better okay suddenly everything becomes much much nicer okay so that's the decision feedback equalizer so you then instead of feeding back the filtered version xk you feed back decisions on xk okay so you move this guy inside okay so if you do that what picture will you get let me draw the whole picture once again sk m of z noise gets added okay okay so you had zk here plus minus maybe i'll call this guy still xk okay i'll call it x prime k okay just because i want to distinguish this between move decisions this is s cap k then you feed it back what i have to put i m of z minus 1 here okay so this is the zero forcing decision feedback equalizer okay A few comments about this structure okay so first of all is this structure linear no right so once you move these decision things inside you're doing arbitrary decisions it's not it's not when you're doing non linear things immediately you're doing non linear things okay so clearly this is this whole structure becomes non linear okay non linear is one thing and another thing is it's definitely stable right whatever you do whatever your mfz is it will be stable why yeah the detector will output only either only finite numbers it will output only values from the alphabet which is always finite there's no, no question of it ever becoming unbounded okay so nothing is going to become unbounded it's even x prime will cannot be unbounded if if your first cap is bounded z is bounded definitely the filtering will also be bounded x prime can never go unbounded so it will definitely be bibo stable whatever you do right so because of that non linearity so that's so in this one simple sleek idea of pushing that slicer inside they have accomplished at least stability irrespective of zeros on the unit circle for mz okay so that's a nice thing that has been accomplished another thing that has been accomplished is again in the figure of merit okay so the figure of merit seems like is a little bit difficult to compute okay so you have to compute the figure of merit here for x, x prime right you have to find out all the possibilities for x prime and and all that so assuming all the previous decisions are correct okay as if you assume all the previous decisions are correct one can quickly find the figure of merit okay so i'll come and pick up with this next week okay so we'll look at this and see, see how to find figure of merit and do comparisons with the previous case okay is there any question so this is i think uh, the essence of feedback <laughs> is the most vital thing okay anyway let me stop now and comment on this offline okay, so